had a couple of videos recently where they're, I guess, a little negative. They're rant videos, which I think are warranted, but I don't want everything I do to be a rant video. There's plenty, plenty, plenty I love about music and I love about vinyl and I love about life with music in it. And I like sharing my stories and all that stuff. And this video, I thought I would do five records. You see kind of the hints of four of them. And I would guess that some people will know two of them right away. Well, obviously the one that's almost completely revealed behind me and one other one. And I would guess that probably 30% of the people might know three of the four. Um, I'm guessing that fourth one's uh, pretty much impossible because a lot of records look like that until you reveal a little bit more. But these are records that, um, and there's a fifth one that is, um, I'm going to, I'm going to show as well or highlight as well. These are all records that in my mind are autumn records. They're fall records. They're records that just sound so good this time of year. Um, when you're putting on layers and you're outside and you come back in and maybe you have a fire and you have some hot chocolate, maybe you put something stronger in there and you're just um, getting warm and, and music can be so vital to that, creating like a warm space and warm feeling, hopefully with loved ones. Um, or your special someone or whatever at this time of year. But this is, um, yeah, albums that I'm five autumnal albums that I am thankful for. And I'll start out with the one that you can see right behind me. That's Bob Dylan's New Morning. Came out in 1970. A lot of people, I don't know, they don't, they kind of overlook this record. It's certainly not like a record that if you're casually into Dylan, you're probably going to know. And when I say casually into Dylan, I should probably rephrase that because there are so many levels of Dylan. If you're, if you have five Dylan records, chances are you don't have this one. But this came out in 1970. It's, uh, in my mind, an incredibly strong record, but it's also very loose. It's just, you know, him with a new batch of songs, you can tell he's kind of like intent family man. It kind of shows with the warmth of the record. Um, really strong songs on here, but more for me, it's more like the mood. It's a record you can drop the needle on, play it all the way through, and it just sounds good. It just sounds like something that um, that is maybe a little bit different for a lot of Dylan records. It sounds very, very warm and very inviting and kind of looser, too. Um, you don't necessarily have like really, really, you know, songs that would make like um, standout songs that would make like a collection of greatest hits or anything like that with outside of um, maybe If Not For You, which is a song he wrote with George Harrison. George Harrison covered it on his album All Things Must Pass, which also came out in 1970. And it's also on this record. And then you've got um, songs. There's a couple songs that were featured in The Big Lebowski, which might be the most exposure that this album's ever had as far as potentially winning over a new audience, um, Man and Me, and I think there might be one other one that was featured on that. It's just a really good album for Dylan. Um, it gets lumped in with Self-Portrait. I think it's much stronger than Self-Portrait, although when you have the expanded Self-Portrait and you can look at it in a new light, um, some of it sounds, there is some overlap, I guess, but as far as a single record, you know, I don't think it gets much better than New Morning post- I mean, I post uh, Blonde on Blonde and before Blood on the Tracks, for me, um, I think it's a stronger record. I like it better than John Wesley Harding. John Wesley Harding feels a lot um, colder and um, denser, whereas this is like open. You know, you put it on and it's just it just it's just a nice fall record. Um, and maybe there isn't as much substance to it as other Dylan records, but it's very nice and I like it a lot. So that's all I'll say about it. The album behind that, you can probably see, I'm gonna hold off on that just for a second. I wanna talk about another record. This is um, Lucinda Williams' Essence, follow up to Car Wheels on a Gravel Road. You know, much of it's kind of stripped down, just kind of starts off. It's like her at her kitchen table, which I guess is, is has that sound anyway. And that's, I guess, where she does a lot of writing. But Lonely Girls, you know, Steal Your Love, just really, really kind of sets that um, kind of cold autumn morning, uh, making the coffee kind of um, record. Great on those kinds of days. I think it's a really underrated record of hers. It's one of my favorites. I wish it would come out on vinyl. Um, hopefully it will sometime soon. Hopefully they'll do it right and uh, not spread it over uh, four records at 45 RPMs or four sides at 45 RPM. But um, an album that I'm going to start digging out and playing more as um, as we dig into um, into this new season. Now behind that we have uh, Nick Cave's 
and the bad seeds uh, the boatman's call this album probably needs little introduction to people um, i've talked about it before i know a lot of people talk about it it's a lot of people's it's up there on one of their favorite um, records list um, to me it just it just has that fall feel as well right down to the album cover and the jacket he's wearing um, this is an album he did kind of with less bad seas input for sure you know they had finished uh, murder ballads and this i think were recorded around the same time or maybe even the, during the same sessions but murder ballads featured heavy bad seas participation whereas this one's a little bit more stripped down it's him at the piano it's um it's him definitely in full-on singer songwriter mode i think he kind of found a new voice he had a relationship beginning and ending he documents a lot of that here there's just incredible incredible beauty in here and you know, a little bit of darkness too like you'd get with some the most Nick cave records but just a brilliant brilliant fall record uh, most known for the title song or not title song but the lead off song into your arms which i think is just an incredible uh song that's got are you the one we are waiting for black hair west country girl just an amazing amazing record from nick cave and the bad seas and one of their best and one that sounds absolutely brilliant this time of year the one behind that, like I said, is not, you're not giving any, I'm not giving anything away unless you're kind of reading my mind, or maybe if you've watched all these videos that I've done, you could maybe piece together what might be back there. But this is an album by Mark Lanigan called I'll Take Care of You. This is the album that really got me into Mark Lanigan. I had heard The Winding Sheet, of, of course I'd heard The Screaming Trees before then. Um, I, the Screaming Trees did not do a lot for me, if I'm being honest. Um, I can hear a song or two now, and I'll be like, wow, that's really good. I really like that. But for me, it's Mark Lanigan, and it's Mark Lanigan's solo. Uh, a friend of mine introduced me to The Winding Sheet, his first album, and um, you know, I really like that quite a bit, too. He did it with Kurt Cobain. There's a song in there, Where Did You Sleep Last Night, a Lead Belly cover that they do together that predates what Cobain would later do on... Um, MTV Unplugged, but it's just a great introduction to this talent who, um, if you read his book, especially the first one, he openly talks about his vocal range not being used effectively at all with um, Screaming Trees records. They would write the music, the band would, and he would put vocals on top of it, but it was always kind of outside of his range, whereas you clearly find him um, finding his voice on his solo records, and I think he just does, he's fully found it in full-on like strength and at his kind of at its peak, although there are many, many peaks with this album, I'll Take Care of You. It's a covers record. Um, he's a huge fan of the Gun Club. Um, he covers their song, Carry On. Uh, it covers uh, Gil Scott Heron's I'll Take Care of You. There's some standard folk songs on here. And it just makes for a really, really nice um, listening uh, session. They're putting it on in the fall, same kind of thing, draws you in. There's a lot of warmth there to his voice. And uh, I absolutely love Mark Lanigan. And I, I don't think, um, I personally think this is a really, really great place to start with Mark Lanigan. I'll Take Care of You from 1999. I believe it was his fifth solo record, maybe fourth, fourth or fifth. And the next one, which some of you have probably guessed, is uh, it kind of just illustrates fall in my mind. You know, like these little critters hanging around like fire playing instruments. Uh, this is. Um, Big Thief's album, Dragon New Mountain, I Believe in You. It came out like probably a year and a half ago now, maybe two years ago. This record, I think, is just phenomenal. It's a double record, but it plays very quickly. You play it, and it does not feel like you're playing a double record, um, in that the time goes by pretty quickly. And I've had m multiple people say that, too. It's like, for a double record, it never like really wears out its welcome at all. There's very little that you would think like, okay, well, we definitely trim that if we were kind of paring this down. It definitely has a, a wealth of different styles on it, but it just plays through kind of in a seamless, um, seamless sequencing that that seems to really work. Did I say seam enough there or enough s alliteration? Um, but I absolutely love it, and it's an album that I haven't fully, even though it's been out for quite a while, there, I always find something new in it. I haven't fully digested it. You know, I think they're an incredible band. They're probably, probably my favorite band of the last 10 years, or maybe they go back a little bit before that. Big Thief, um, they do some great things, and I absolutely love this record. And it just, it just screams fall, too. It just has that 
you know, intimate kind of vibe to it. Friends playing music, kind of loose. Timeless songs too. Songs that just are really well written, lyrically great. You know, you could be one of those those members on the cover, uh, animals on the cover, and you know, <laughs> pick up this song, pick up this album, pick a song, you know, and and play it for your friends. It has that kind of um, vibe to it of community and songs are so well written that I think they could be used for multiple purposes. But that's Big Thief's Drag a New Mountain, I Believe in You. So that's it. These are five albums I am very thankful for. Um, the very fall records, the records that I'll start playing um, and have started playing some of them at this time of year and records that I they tend to come back to. I'm also very thankful for everyone who watches my videos and participates in discussions and subscribes. It's been a really cool journey so far, and I'm glad you're along with it, with me, with this. And I wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving.